We are going to take you live to Washington now, where the White House's John Kirby is speaking after escalations in the Middle East. Let's listen in. For calm and de-escalation. I'd like to take just a few minutes to correct the record on uh, a few points that have come out in the last uh, several hours. I've seen reporting that the Iranians meant to fail, that this spectacular and embarrassing failure was all by design. I've also seen uh, Iran say that they provided early warning to help Israel prepare its defenses and limit any potential damage. All of this is categorically false. To coin the phrase from the president, or still a phrase from the president, it's malarkey. This attack failed because it was defeated by Israel, by the United States, and by a coalition of other partners committed to Israel's defense. So let's be straight. Given the scale of this attack, Iran's intent was clearly to cause significant destruction and casualties. Iranian leaders launched so many missiles and other munitions because they knew that many were going to be defeated. But the aim was to get as many of them through Israel's, Israel's defenses as possible. Now, I've also seen this speculation about messages passed forth and warnings. We did receive me messages from Iran, and they received messages from us too. But there was never any message to us or to anyone else on the time frame, the targets, or the type of response. In fact, before yesterday, it was presumed that 100 ballistic missiles might overwhelm even the best defensive systems. That was Iran's intent, and as you all saw for yourself, it didn't work. This attack was defeated thanks to our preparations, to a coalition of committed partners, and to Israel's remarkable defensive systems. And I want to focus on that last point for just a moment. Israel today is in a far stronger strategic position than it was only a few days ago. Iran's vaunted missile program, something it has used to threaten Israel and the region, <coughs> proved to be far less effective. Israel's defenses, on the other hand, proved even better than many had long assumed. Israel's defense was strengthened by a coalition of countries led by the United States and working together. <coughs> the United States has never before so extensively and so directly defended Israel from attack. <clears throat> to ensure that that continues to be the case, the House of Representatives must urgently pass the National Security Supplemental, which has already passed the Senate with overwhelming bipartisan support. That supplemental includes funding that the President requested for the Iron Dome and David Sling system, systems that saved countless lives this weekend and have saved many lives from Hamas and from Hezbollah rockets over the past six months. Passing that bill is the fastest and surest way to get Israel the aid it needs. And we must act urgently to replenish Israel's air defenses, just as Congress must act urgently to replenish, replenish Ukraine's air defenses, which also continue to be attacked every single day with the same Iranian-made Iranian drones. Now, finally, much of the world today is standing with Israel. When the President spoke to the G7 leaders yesterday, they were unified in their condemnation of Iran and their determination to hold Iran accountable at the President's direction. Our teams are now following up with G7 capitals on new multilateral sanctions to target Iran's missile and other nefarious programs. G7 countries that had yet to designate the IRGC a terrorist organization are now considering doing so. And going forward, we will be working to further isolate Iran internationally and increase economic and other forms of pressure. So that's the upshot here. A stronger Israel, a weaker Iran, a more unified alliance of partners. That was not Iran's intent when it launched this attack on Saturday night, not even close. And again, they failed. They failed utterly. Now, as you also know, President Biden is welcoming both the Iraqi Prime Minister and the uh, Prime Minister Peter Fiala of the Czech Republic to the White House. President and Prime Minister al-Sudani from Iraq will discuss the U.S. and Iraq's shared vision for our broad, multifaceted relationship. During the meeting, these leaders will re reaffirm their commitment to advancing regional stability, to expanding opportunities for Iraq's people, and reinforcing Iraq's sovereignty, security, and stability. The Iraqi Prime Minister will be here for almost a week, and in that time, he will meet a range of administration officials, including both Secretary Blinken at the State Department and Secretary Austin at the Defense Department. He will have opportunities to share his priorities and vision for Iraq with a variety of audiences here in Washington and in other parts of the United States. Now, of course, the President will be taking the opportunity to discuss how we will continue to work with Prime Minister Sudani to defuse regional tensions and to prevent Iraq from being drawn into conflict. Iraq, the President firmly believes, is central to the region's stability. And then later, as Kareem previewed, 
uh, he'll have a chance to meet with uh, President, uh, I'm sorry, Prime Minister Fiala to celebrate the 25th anniversary uh, of the Czech Republic as a NATO ally. Over the past 25 years, our alliance has grown stronger, and the relationship between our two countries have grown even closer as we've deepened defense cooperation, including through the Czech Republic's purchase of 24 F-35 fighters earlier this year. The President will congratulate the Prime Minister on legislation that Czechia recently passed, requiring it to spend at least 2 percent of its GDP on defense, which, as you know, is the NATO goal. The leaders will also discuss their strong support for Ukraine, and the President will thank the Prime Minister for leading an effort to help secure nearly 1 million rounds of ammunition for Ukraine. And one more thing, if you'll just bear with me, I'm almost done. Today marks the one-year conflict in Sudan. Since fighting erupted a year ago, civilians have been forced to bear the brunt of this senseless conflict. Thousands have been killed and wounded. Women and girls have been kidnapped and assaulted. Hundreds of thousands of families have been displaced. Communities and livelihoods have been utterly destroyed. And famine now is threatening to take hold. That's why the United States continues to commit resources to create conditions for a potential peace process, to hold accountable actors who are seeking to sow more violence, and to assure that humanitarian assistance reaches the civilians who urgently need it. We reiterate our calls for all parties in this conflict to lay down their weapons and put an end to this intolerable violence for the future of Sudan, but most of all for the future of the Sudanese people. Thank you. Appreciate your patience. Um, uh, Israel's military chief just said, well, there will be a response to the attack in Iran. So does the U.S. have any indication of what those next steps are from Israel? We will let the Israelis speak to that. Does the U.S. expect to be consulted in advance of them taking any next steps? Uh, I, I won't get into our diplomatic uh, conversations or expectations. Uh, the Israeli government uh, will determine for themselves uh, if there's going to be a response and what that response is going to look like. And are you able to discuss um, the specific roles played by other members of the regional coalition from over the weekend, specifically Jordan and Saudi Arabia, whether they helped shoot down missiles or what other actions they may have done? No, I think we'll let uh, other members of the coalition speak for themselves. Um, John, Israel is reportedly looking at options that would send a message to Iran but not cause casualties. Is the administration presenting alternatives to Netanyahu? This is, uh, these, this is an Israeli decision to make, um, whether and how they'll respond uh, to what Iran did on Saturday, and we're going to leave it squarely with them. Their decision to make, but are you making suggestions? <laughs> we are not involved in their decision-making process about a potential response. And just, uh, is the President, does he have any plans to speak to Netanyahu again? I, I don't have anything on the calendar to speak to, but uh, look, I mean, they've, they've spoken frequently over the last six months. They'll absolutely speak again at the appropriate time. Thank you, Karine. Um, John, just one day before the attack, President Biden issued a warning to Iran, don't, and now the U.S. is not taking any part in an Israeli reprisal. So does that signal to Iran that it can defy the U.S. without facing any consequences? I don't know, man. If I'm sitting in Tehran and I'm taking a look at what just happened on Saturday night, I don't think I'd be betting that the United States is uh, not willing to get engaged here and help defend Israel. I mean, you had American fighter pilots in the air, in combat operations, shooting down drones and missiles that were heading towards, uh, towards Israel, as well as U.S. Navy destroyers at sea, knocking them down from there. So the message should be very clear to anybody. When the President says we're going to take our commitments to the region seriously, when we're going to help Israel defend itself, we got skin in the game and we proved that. I understand what you're saying about deterrence, but what about consequences? As I just said, and Kareen also let in, he, he had a conversation with G7 leaders. He'll be engaging with other allies and partners. Uh, we, have achieved, uh, we have seen swift condemnations about what Iran did from the international community, and we're going to be working with international partners to, <laughs> to, uh, to, to work up options to hold Iran appropriately accountable. And then just uh, on the logistics of this, with roughly 300 drones and missiles shot down, can you talk about how you will assess the debris fields and the shrapnel and how much that um, impacted people on the ground? Well, we're not going to be doing any kind of an assessment uh, of uh, the impact on the ground. The Israeli Defense Forces and Israeli officials have already been out and about looking at the impact on the ground. There were very few 
missiles that got through. And the only damage that was done, it was very minor damage to one air base in, in Israel um, that did not even put that air base out of commission. The Israelis have already spoken to this. I believe they've already released imagery of some of the things they found on the ground. Sadly, a, a young girl, an innocent civilian, less than 10 years old, was severely wounded. That was the only casualty that we're aware of. Thank you, John. Thank you. Uh, John, a couple of questions on Iran and then on Iraq on the uh, Prime Minister visit. You just said that the White House were not informed of the timing of the Iranian attack on Israel. But the President told us that he, the attack is going to be sooner than later and almost a day after the attack happened. So just can you explain this one? I never said we didn't have an idea. I never said we didn't have uh, information that, uh, that, uh, that, uh, we could, uh, that we could uh, act on and speak to our uh, Israeli counterparts about. What I said was, Iran never delivered a message giving us the time and the targets. No, 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 no. No timing. I mean, I want to be clear. This whole narrative out there that Iran passed us a message with what they were going to do is ridiculous. Do you believe that Iranian nuclear sites is a legitimate target? Uh, I, you're, I'm not going to get into targeting discussions here from the podium. Let me ask you about the Prime Minister. Uh, is the White House satisfied with the way that the Iraqi government is reining in the militias in Iraq, considering they are one of the proxies of the Iranian regime? We're going we're gonna to have an in-depth discussion with the Prime Minister and his team about the, the uh, continued activities of militia groups uh, in Iraq, um, and, uh, and we'll reinforce uh, our views about how seriously we take the force protection of our, our troops and our facilities there. And we'll also expect, I fully expect that, uh, that uh, we'll talk with the Prime Minister about uh, the counter-ISIS mission in, in, in Iraq and its, and its potential future. And finally, just when he said, in the spirit of partnership, uh, we disagree with the United States. And he mentioned something like, we need a new system for international law, to respect international law, international humanitarian law, protection of civilians, and diplomatic missions. So he's hinting at the Israeli attack in Damascus. He's also hinting about not doing enough to respect international law. Is this a point of disagreement between you and the Iraqi government? You'll have to talk to the prime minister about what he meant by those comments. Uh, Iraq is a, a key partner, one we really value. We wouldn't be having this meeting today. He wouldn't be having meetings this week if it wasn't an important relationship. As I said, the president believe, believes that Iraq is critical to regional stability. Good, yeah. Thanks, Karine. Thanks, Admiral. Um, you said just now that, um, this, that Iran's attack was a spectacular and embarrassing failure. Do you, um, does the president believe that um, Israel should now take this as a win and show restraint? I, I know where the context of the question is coming in. Uh, during his conversation with the Prime Minister on Saturday night, uh, first of all, he congratulated the Prime Minister for the exceptional effort by the Israeli Defense Forces and, of course, commended, as you would expect the Commander-in-Chief to do, uh, the participation of U.S. forces in this coalition and the great work that was done. I mean, it's easy. To, uh, you know, I was looking, some, looking at some of the video before I came out here that's uh, running on some of your networks, and, uh, you know, it's easy to look at that like it's some kind of a computer game, right? It looks so simple things getting knocked out of the sky. Let me tell you something. It's not simple. It's hard. And a lot of planning and preparation had to go into that, a lot of coordination. And the president talked to the prime minister about that. He also noted that this was an extraordinary success, a military success, and that that success alone, just for itself, speaks volumes uh, about Israel standing in the region, that they, they don't stand alone, that a coalition came to help them defend themselves. It also says a lot about Israel's military superiority. And it says just as much about Iran's military inferiority when it came to this particular set of attacks. And the president urged the prime minister to think about what that success says all by itself to the rest of the region. He, I mean, in terms of thinking about, I mean, but think about restraint about, you know, that maybe this should not go further, that, that you know, further. All, all I'll say is the, the president from the beginning of this conflict on October 7th has been steadfast and consistent. We don't want to see a war with Iran. We don't want to see a broader regional conflict. We will do what we have to do to defend Israel. All right, so that is the White House responding to Iran's reprisal attack on Israel over the weekend, uh, which dramatically escalated the conflict in the Middle East. John Kirby uh, saying that the attack was defeated thanks to our planning and thanks to Israel's robust defense system. He also says 
It is the Israeli government who will decide whether or not there will be a response to this, as says that is an Israeli decision to make. This as world le leaders are urging Israel not to retaliate today. We'll have more on that and more reaction coming up throughout the day.